Yo, Trevor here with a Gungeon flavored update for Indie Pogo. Bulletkin will be the first free DLC fighter to join the battle. As with all fighters, our goal is to represent each property as faithfully as possible while still maintaining balance within our meta. And that extends to abilities, skins, audio, and more. Bulletkin's role within our game is to be a projectile zoner who has low verticality from jumps and struggles with recovery when launched off stage. Despite being one of the smaller fighters on the roster, we made Bulletkin a bit heavier since it's made of metal. Enter the Gungeon is a game full of content. When sitting down to figure out what pieces of the original game should be translated into a platform fighter moveset, we knew one aspect had to take priority over all others. The shooting. Giving Bulletkin a forward shooting gunshot didn't quite live up to the feel of the original game, so we ended up overhauling our game's controls to accommodate. Unique to Bulletkin, you can move the right stick to bring out a cursor and shoot with the right trigger. The player has 360 degree aim, which alone gives Bulletkin a distinct advantage. As a result of that, we had to include a few limits that should be familiar to fans of Enter the Gungeon. After using all the ammo in your clip, you are forced to reload next time you land on the ground. You can jump up mid-reload to use other moves, but you cannot get bullets back until you finish the full reload. Active reload is also available, and it makes reload times a little faster and gives bullets increased damage, but only for the bullets that were missing during said active reload. For special moves, we pulled from various bulletkin breeds, as well as common Gungeoneer abilities. The up special has player spawn bullet wings. We gave Bulletkin weak vertical recovery as a trade-off for the shooting mechanics. Bulletkin attacks with the initial wing swipe and slowly hovers down during this state. The player may also access their neutral special, the gun swap, while in this slow falling state. However, shooting or attacking will end the slow fall, meaning players cannot camp from afar with this move. The side special borrows from the electrified rubber bullets. The longer you hold A, the farther you will shoot off, and of course, hitting terrain or fighters mean you will bounce off in various ways. The down special is a somewhat traditional dive. On first use, it creates a chest that acts as a terrain object. Subsequent uses yield a regular dive, taking slight inspiration from the trigger twins. We'll come back to the chest and cover a little bit more about it in just a bit. The grounded charge attack lets you hold A to remain grounded and charge up power. On button release, Bulletkin creates and flips a table. This move is an exceptionally good edge guarding tool, as it can block an enemy from returning or fall off as a projectile. It does have its limits though, as it cannot be created inside terrain, and of course, the longer you charge it, the more damage the attack deals when it hits. Most importantly, you can shoot through your own table, but it blocks projectiles from other players. Now most fighters have a very traditional role for their parkour moves. However, Bulletkin has the trademark dodge roll technique, which allows you to damage enemies that you tackle into, but also provides a brief window of invincibility. Bulletkin's moveset wouldn't be complete without melees, and of course the blasphemy had to take this slot. Just like in Gungeon, you're able to shoot bullets from the blasphemy when you're at full health. You're also able to delete projectiles with your melees, just as you would in Gungeon as well. So at this point, you may be wondering why I glossed over the chest and the neutral special. That's because this is where the real meat and potatoes of the moveset come into play. You are able to tap neutral A to quick swap between two guns, or hold neutral A to swap between even more. One of the guns you have by default is the A key 47, which rapid fires low damage keys. Aim them at your chest to open it, and reveal more guns and various items. Fun fact. For the various chests you can create, their rarity actually matches their spawning odds as the first floor of Enter the Gungeon. Of course, better chests yield better rewards. And I'll just go ahead and skip ahead so you don't need to watch me wrestle with the RNG to get all the guns. The starter gun is the generic revolver that all regular bulletkin enemies have in the Gungeon. It fires quick moving bullets that deal low damage. The shotgun shoots out a spread of bullets, and can also be used for positioning. 
its reload time is quite high. We combine some properties of the t-shirt cannon and the pox cannon into a gun that has a random chance to change your enemy's costume. It deals low damage, but is really meant to be more of a novelty gun. It also pushes enemies around, which can be good for messing with your opponent's approach strategies. As previously mentioned, the AK-47 deals quick, weak damage, but is mostly used when opening chests. However, the damage it gains from active reload makes it a good tool for finishing off low health enemies. One of my personal favorites, the Magic Lamp deals no damage, but places stacks on top of enemies. When they have three stacks, a genie appears and unleashes an undodgeable punch. The sniper rifle's unique property is that it deals more damage the farther away an enemy is when it hits. While this might not be entirely faithful, it really needed to happen for balancing reasons. But it does feel really nice when you snipe someone from far away. Just like in Gungeon, the RC missile uses the right stick to aim a rocket which explodes on contact with an enemy or with terrain. We also added the ability to press the trigger again to detonate it early. Now is also a good time to mention that if you are hit in the middle of reloading, you will drop whichever gun you are holding. If you do not pick it up quickly, the resourceful rat will appear and steal it. This means strong guns with long reloads have more risk. For the Phoenix, we actually took the bullet off in favor of it being a gun that purely deals damage over time. However, enemies who are burning can roll to end the fire early. Lastly, the Brick Breaker shoots bullets that bounce off terrain and therefore can hit targets multiple times or hit multiple targets. Each gun has been carefully balanced to make sure that none are overtly superior to another. We also hope to add more guns to chests as time goes on. Particularly, I'd like to see some charge guns such as the Mega Hand or the Heroin. But I'm definitely curious to know if you think that there are any guns that would fit well that we've yet to include. The last part of Bulletkin's kit is the Super Move which you earn by landing attack combos or by earning gems from chests and other sources. Bulletkin Super is the blank, which deals unavoidable AoE damage. It also deals knockback to enemies within a short radius, and is a useful tool when someone is chasing you down, trying to make you drop your gun when in a reload state. And of course, it deletes all projectiles on screen, and prevents projectiles from being created for roughly a second after. So yeah, Bulletkin's moveset is easily the most complex one we've created to this day. A lot of care went into representing Enter the Gungeon properly, so we hope you like what you see. And of course, if there's anything that seems off, definitely let us know. I'll also add some gameplay footage so you can see the bullet in action in an actual fight. Thanks for watching.